So you're still probably better off costing you less than in on the motorcycle than it would be in a car. That's correct. That's correct. And as we're going to go inside and take a look, his mansion, and it kind of is a mansion in there, <laughs> and you'll see he's got a lot of comfort. Yeah, it's very spacious. Hi everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Kevin. And Kevin is doing something I've long thought about doing and admired the idea of. He's living on a motorcycle pulling a trailer. Trailer. So, uh, Kevin, tell us, how did you end up here in the middle of the desert living on a motorcycle? Well, I was very inspired by your videos over the last four years or so, and I had my motorcycle come to me just out of the blue. I went and picked it up in Salt Lake City. And then I traveled across the country and got the tent trailer. And I'd had many experiences on tent trailers before. And so I decided it would be a great idea to try to connect the two together. It worked out for the lightweightness of it and the uh, portability of it. I used to stick it in my garage and forget about the trailer, ride the bike like crazy. But now I'm riding the bike and the trailer together full time. And so how long have you been on the road? I started going on the road full-time-ish since August. So that's quite a while. Yeah, oh yeah. I went up mostly through Utah, Nevada, um, Arizona, and then most of Northern California, and uh, visiting family at first, getting used to the equipment, and then started going to Anza Borrego and just practicing the art of camping out of the rigs. And so you've been a motorcycle rider all your life? On and off. I've been riding since I was around 14 years old. And then I own two different types of bikes over many years. I was busy raising children for most of my right. life. That takes your whole life it right does. there. It does. Yeah. And so when you were uh, when your kids were younger, you would take them out in a, a traditional tent camper. Exactly. So Because they were inexpensive and easy to drive. Sure. And, and again, that portability and they were lightweight. I could pull it behind a minivan. And much like this, it's a, it's a ratio of weight of the trailer to the weight, ratio of the vehicle. So right. I had two tent trailers over many years, and I just enjoyed going out with my kids and exploring nature and finding new places and just shutting down. Getting away from the rat race. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so you're, you're a fairly young man. Are you retired? No, I'm trying to be. You're trying to be, trying to <laughs> live my, the life of retirement. It's my full-time effort to work part-time. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in favor of that. Uh, and so you're supporting yourself on the road? Exactly. I just signed up for the beet harvest over here at the um, RTR the other day. I slipped in five minutes before they closed. I signed up also with one of the um, folks doing the forest uh, management system. So I'm already on their books. And all, you have the wonderful folks here who are hosting this event. And they gave me a book full of other vendors to contact. So I'm hoping to get connected. That's it. I'm sure you will. Okay. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm confident you will. <laughs> so you're supporting yourself on the road as you travel. Uh, you had a lot of choices. You're familiar with tent camping. You could have just taken your car and gone tent camping. Right. Uh, but instead, you're on a motorcycle. Why are you on a motorcycle? Um, I've always loved the freedom of the road that the motorcycle en enables me to partake in. I can take the bike like I did this morning and go seven miles that way and hit that mountain and just try to climb that mountain. So there's that adventure side of it that's really important to me because I'm only going to be young so long and I can do these things still. And what do you do when you come back? I got tired of camping on the ground. I did that when I was younger. And so when I found this rig with its unique situation inside, it really, um, it just seemed like a perfect fit. Now, do you get pretty good gas mileage with it? Usually bikes do pretty well. Yes, I get about 35 miles to the gallon when I'm not loaded and when I'm pulling the trailer about 30 miles to the gallon. So it drops considerably, but that's a lot of weight in relationship to the bike. Yes, uh, which is still good. I mean, uh, it's hard to get 30 miles to the gallon loaded out of a car. Right. Uh, it would be a pretty small car to be able to do that. Sure. And with this motorcycle, it's 1200 cc, so it's a big bike. I don't have any problem cruising down the highway. It doesn't even feel the trailer. It just goes. Yeah. So that's where I'm giving up the fuel mileage is for that uh, ability to get out of traffic and stay out of trouble on the highway. And this is a dual purpose bike. So like you said, you could just head off towards the mountains. Exactly. And go off road. That's, act that's right. I have brand new knobby tire in the back. So it just grabs all this gravel and spits it out of the backside. Um, so yeah, I feel pretty safe on it. And if you were in a car, you'd be, maybe, you'd be getting the 30 miles to the gallon, but you'd be, have no comfort unless you added a trailer, and then there goes the 30 miles to the gallon. Exactly. Now, I, I spent a lot of time um, motorcycle camping as a young man, and I'm going to have a, a, a video coming out about some of that, but the, 
I, and I debated seriously about doing it again. For me, it was a dog. I, I got to have a dog. And so that kept me from it. Sure. But the second thing that kept me from it was the weather. And, you know, you ride. You, we were just talking about how you rode over here, and the wind practically blew you it off It had the me road. sideways, yeah. And it's I've done a lot of that. Part of the adventure. It's part of the adventure. So <laughs> rain and snow, sure. that you just... You embrace that as part of the adventure. No, we're going to dodge that like, oh, like true crazy. snowbirds. <laughs> I'm going to be a moto bird and I'm going to move to the best temperature and the lowest precipitation possible. It's a safety issue too for me, so it I have sure to keep is. that in mind. Um, the trailer's self-contained once it's covered, so it doesn't ruin anything that's inside. Um, and the bike's waterproof. It's just that I'm not waterproof if I fall off the bike. Right. Yes, and your and your uh, bones aren't uh, waterproof no, either. That's right. They break pretty easily. Right. That bike falls on you. So you just part. You just incorporate it as part of the adventure and say that's great. Exactly. There's nothing like the freedom of riding a motorcycle. Uh, there isn't. Yeah. Amen. You're preaching right there. Yeah. I just <laughs> I, I I understand. Sure. The appeal. And it was many years that I didn't ride because I had children. It was a great conscious decision. I, I used to put him on the back of a Goldwing. My son got plenty of rides when he was young on the back of the bike and my daughter got a few rides. Um, but it was just a decision not to put them at risk. And now my last child uh, has just launched from home. So she's on her own now and it's a chance for me to, you know, get my legs underneath me again. So how long do you think you'll be doing this? couple of years I think just to make see how it goes right and I'm thinking I might go to a vehicle at some point yeah. the vehicle will probably tow this vehicle somehow I don't know if it'll be attached sure. to the back of the van and then the trailer will come on the back of that through a tongue I have no idea but I, I can't see giving up a motorcycle with this lifestyle it's the freedom I want it, it kind of looks to me like say a truck with a sliding camper pulling a cargo trailer right and you'd have both Exactly. Yeah, uh, you could take off and go cross country on the bike and the trailer, and then live in the live in the uh, truck and the camper. Otherwise, that's right. That's right. I could do that. There's no stopping the possibilities. Options. Options are a good thing. Right. A really good thing. I'm really intrigued by your setup. Would you mind showing us around? It'd be my pleasure. I'm glad that you asked. All right. Let's do that. All right. Great. Let's go look around, folks. So tell us about your uh, motorcycle. Okay, my pride and joy. It's a 2012 Yamaha Super Tenere, and uh, has around 30,000 miles as of August, and now it has around 45,000 miles. So I've been driving a lot of highway. Um, it's a dual sport motorcycle, six speeds. It's got these special bags so I can carry all the clutter. I started camping off of this bike strictly, and then I went to camping out of the tent trainer. Um, it's been fun. It's been real fun. And so it's a dual purpose bike, meaning as much as a big heavy bike can be off-road, it is off-road. Exactly. Yeah, it, it performs beautifully on the highway. It's got great road manners. And it also has great um, features that allow me, at my age, to ride very smoothly on the dirt. It's got traction control, analog brakes. It has everything but a beverage dispenser. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, no, you kind of added that. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you got a... There's my water supply for my trailer. <laughs> right. Well, we had to custom build a hitch to match the trailer because this has only been done a couple times that I've seen. Once in New Zealand, once in Australia, and once here in the States, but the woman has dismantled the bike and sold it. So no one else had a trailer. We had to hand manufacture that. Um, that was a challenge, but it was a great bonding experience for my brother and I to do. Uh, tell us about your trailer. Okay. It's a 2001 Windward trailer. Their manufacturer is not making them anymore, so I, well, I like to think it's one of a kind, but there's probably some out there. Um, it only weighs 350 pounds unloaded. It has a ice chest on the front tongue. It has a space for a battery, which I don't use currently. Um, and you can see it's pretty big for a little trailer. It's only three feet wide and six feet long, towable. That's the whole distance of it, except the tongue. So pretty compact. That's amazing. And uh, you were suggesting that it might be the perfect thing for someone with a Prius. Sure, sure. Because it's so low and so light. Or anyone who's looking for more space on the back of their car with good weather or, you know, 400 or 200 year, days out of the year, they probably could use that instead of staying inside their car. So it's a good idea. Yeah, very good idea. Well, this company is out of business. There are still a lot of companies that are making uh, these really nice bike trailers. Absolutely. I've seen many variations of it. Some of them include 
tent trailers that aren't on the ground in the front. They're just strictly uh, on a platform. So there's a lot of those out there for some reason, and I haven't put my finger on why. So there's ma manufacturers still. Right. So you can get these, and it's something to consider for your car if you're not up to a motorcycle. A Prius or a smart car or a Toyota Corolla would right. be great. Right. Uh, a Honda Civic. Just yeah, it only we reduced the gas mileage on my motorcycle by 4%, so that's not a bad equation on a car either. Yeah. Yeah, if you're already getting 30, uh, 30 or 40 on your car, then the drop should be very little. Nominal, at best. Yeah. So I'd, I'd recommend it to anyone who's considering using a smaller vehicle for something smaller. It's it's a small version of a tent trailer. It's very compact. Right. It does everything a tent trailer does. So uh, do you mind if we go inside and take a look around? I'd love to show it to you. Okay, let's do that, right. folks. All right. So now we're inside with Kevin. And uh, Kevin, this is, you're a tall guy. You're six foot? Six two. Six two. Yeah. And you're not having any stooping at all. No, no, this is, uh, this is uh, really tall. It's seven foot eight up to this peak right here. So my friend Kareem Abdul-Jabbar could come and play basketball with me in here if he wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> It's pretty comfortable. Yeah, and so wh where are we now? This is kind of like a living room? Yeah, this is a multi-purpose room. Let's call it that. We have a, a kitchen area, quasi-office space. This is my refuse disposal area, my water storage. And off to this side, I have a little prep area for my luggage, shoes. And of course, we have a little seating area where I can sit at night and, and read. And then behind the little seat is another little seat for doing any business that needs to get done. There's always and, business like that. Yeah, and I can even take the little uh, the, the part you know, connected to the back of the bike and strap it down and go dump at the dump site. So, uh huh. Right. Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. There's lots of space. There's lots of places to hang different things. You, you'd be amazed. Storage-wise, there's all these little compartments as well. You have these great little places for putting things, can openers, salt, pepper, whatever your heart desires. So this is your living, lounging area, office, uh, just knock around room. Exactly. Where do you sleep? Um, well, I'm glad you asked. Let's, uh, let's check it out. And there is an enormous bed. <laughs> What size is that bed? That is 78 inches by 82 inches. It's a king size bed, so it's uh, pretty comfortable for me. I feel really uh, comfortable sleeping here. Matter of fact, better than at home. It's amazing that yeah. this huge amount of space is in this tiny little trailer. Yeah. Three foot by six foot. That's right. That's right. You want me to show you how that comes to be three foot by six foot? Yes, yeah, show us. Okay, uh, yeah, there's a little, there's these storage, of course, and then there's those storage. Of course, you have the the trailer itself with There's the, the trailer with the two wheels the little wheel well is right here and the other wheel well is here and so it's about 18 inches deep so three feet wide by six feet long um, that's a lot of cubic feet of storage and then when I'm done horsing around I just shut it down um, and away it goes and then when the trailer is closed you know it's I call it an origami because you can imagine all this space has to shut down. It ends up on top of this three by six area, and it's about this tall. And then it's covered with a piece of vinyl that Velcro's down. So it's very compact. It's very aerodynamic. The, the, the wind just hits the top of my head and just goes right past this little sleek device here. Mm -hmm. So um, it's really well designed. I'd love to thank the person who created this particular one because of the height and the space in this room. Did you want to see the... Uh, the view? Yeah, so it's it's warm in here. It's a cool day. You and I are both wearing right. uh, uh, jackets, light, light sweaters. Right. Uh, but it's hot in here. Right. So does it get hot here in the summer? Yeah, what I do in the, in the winter is I keep this closed, all, all sealed up so during the day I get heat gain and I can carry that as long as I can into the evening. In the summer, it's the opposite. Whatever the shady side is, I leave that open and I shut down the sunward side. So it just depends what's going on. I shut all these windows down in um, the winter at night, but it, in the middle of summer, it's wide open. I just right. let it flow. Right. So why don't, you, yeah, why don't you show us the windows open? Okay. Excellent. I can do that. This will be facing the sunset. The wind's pushing it closed. And look at that view. Look at that enormous... The whole side of the trailer just came open. It's almost six feet long now that I think about it. Yeah. And I'm sorry you're seeing my shower, my outdoor showers right That's there. That's fine. So, yeah. 
That um, answers the question of how you go to the shower. Yeah. And there's also one on the other side as well. And then there's one over each of the bedroom uh, sides. So you slide that open and you could go to bed with the breeze just blowing right through. Right across. Yeah, in the summer, this would be amazingly cool. It is. I spent some time at Anza Borrego during the summer and it was very nice. Yeah. Very nice. And so this other one opens up just like it. Sure, absolutely. The wind's just going to knock me over. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to be. Uh... And there's my van. Yeah. And the sun, that would be the sunrise over there and exactly. sunset on the other side. Yeah, I rode off, uh, rode the motorcycle all by itself out there this morning and right after breakfast. Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's... I, the way I look at it is he who dies with the most memories wins. And I think you're going to be right at the top of the Yeah, class. I got a little odometer of memories I'm working on. Thank yeah. you for saying that because I'm going to focus on that. That's really important. Yeah. You know how everything in these trailers is kind of small. Here's my two panel solar system. Yep. That's all I need for now. Probably 30 watts or something like that? I don't even know. I know that it keeps every electronic device I have charged. I don't have any loss. So So you're using a um, porta potty as a toilet, oh, uh, a solar bag as a shower. Right. So this is an amazing amount of room. And you know, room and comfort is all relative. If you're a backpacker, you think the, the luggage racks on a motorcycle are a huge amount of room. Right. And if you move, have a motorcycle and this trailer, this is a mansion. Yeah, it opened up a, a, enormous horizons as far as comfort. I don't have to sit outside next to my bike trying to use it to shade me or to block the wind. I can come sit in this comfortable chair or I can take a nap in the middle of the day after I've had a long bit of riding and go to my shower and take a shower and, and then join in, in the group with the caravan. Um, it's, it's opened up a whole bunch of uh, opportunities for me. Right. So uh, the big thing being the bad weather, you got somewhere to go in the bad weather. Right. Uh, and privacy. Exactly. That's a huge one is privacy. Sure. You don't get much on a motorcycle. Privacy. That's right. And here, you go in here and you're all alone. No one knows. Sure. Any idea what uh, one of these new would cost, a new motorcycle trailer? Did you look into that? No, probably around $3,000, $3,500, which, which is a really reasonable, I think. Very much. And, you know, you mentioned earlier that well, something people might think about is... Pulling these with a, a small car like a Prius or sure. a smart car, Toyota, Corolla, Civic. Yeah, I don't know if I mentioned the weight. It's 350 pounds empty or 325, which depends which sheet you read. And then once you load it, you probably have 450, 500 pounds. It just depends your lifestyle. Um, I tend to put a lot of weight on the bike to help offset for, for braking on the trailer uh, response. But it's lightweight. It could, a lot of cars could pull this. Minivans, small oh, cars. Wouldn't know it was there. Smart cars. Right. Yeah. Any of those could pull it and wouldn't know it was there. Exactly. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing your home and your, really, your life of adventure yeah. and freedom. It's just amazing. Yeah, it is amazing now. Thank you. I want to say to you again, thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. For inspiring us to yeah. get out there and do it. Well, seeing, you, seeing folks like you actually living, it's pretty amazing, too. Yeah. So, folks, I think you've got to have gotten some inspiration out of this. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll...